Hello, welcome back to this build of a 16mm scale Hudson Hunslet. Um, real kind of progress to report today, really. Um, as you can see, um, we have a motor fitted um, and wired to a plug. Um, gears in place on the bottom, uh, and I've painted the buffer beams. Um, my painting skills with the airbrush, not great. Um, I'm not sure quite what went wrong. Um, I'm going to hide it in some weathering. Um, I, I don't have the patience at the moment to um, sand this back and repaint it especially because I don't know whether everything else is going to go right yet and as I've said I might try to treat this model as kind of disposable if necessary um, so I'm going to leave it as it is fortunately the rear bumper is worse than the front so once I've got it assembled and can want to take some photos uh, front bumper doesn't look too bad but that's all that's all good um, <clears throat> what I wanted to show though was that not only is the motor wired up to a plug, I also have all of this. Um, so this is a loco remote uh, module for remote control. Uh, we've got an inline fuse just to avoid nasty battery fires and a, a LiPo battery. Um, this is the one I've been using throughout to check that it actually fits inside the body. Um, so I know that, know that fits. Um, and um, obviously this uh, this wire here <coughs> is uh, the plug that goes to the motor. Now I've made sure that um, although I've used the same style of plugs um, I've made sure that I've put this one as the um, the opposite kind of to the the battery so I can't accidentally plug the battery into the into the motor terminals I can only plug the battery into here and then the, the motor into the into the locomotive so um, the local remote is a little different if you've not come across it before. Um, it's a tiny little uh, board. It actually sets up its own Wi-Fi network, so um, you then can control the the loco from your phone. So let's have a quite quick look how that works. I'm just going to plug it in here, and oh, just a minute. These plugs are a bit stiff. Um, which is good because it means they don't come out. Anyway, um, so that's plugged in. So. As I say, we've now got my phone, which I'll bring around here. Um, see, hopefully we'll we'll be able to see it in the in the light. Um, if I just move. It's there. There we go. That's a bit better, <clears throat> so we don't get the, the ring light in the uh, in the shot. So it's a little dark, but now, but um, you get that you can see what's going on. Um, so um, it's set up to go forward. You can just about see that forward is in is in green. Um, so if I press faster. It moves off on its own, and I can reverse and bring it back into back into shot. Um, so um, that's all that's all working nicely. Um, let's say this is the this is the local remote screen for those who haven't seen it. Um, you can set the name of the loco. I've just given it the the uh, the type at the moment. Once I if I decide on giving it an actual the local actual name, which I have a couple of ideas for, um, then I might I might rechange that. But you've got kind of you know just forward, backwards, slower, faster, nothing complicated. Um, works well in the the orange simplex loco and in the Hudson Skip um, loco. So I've gone with it as I said, I've gone with local remote again. Um, this was actually a, a second hand one I picked up on a forum, so it's a bit different to the others I've used in the fact that the others have come with um, plugs attached for the motor. I had to kind of um, jerry-rig this one with um, with a plug of my own rather than with the one that came with it. Um, but as I say, I've I fitted the fitted the fuse. Um, these, I mean, it, they do suggest either um, a polyfuse, resettable polyfuse, or a normal kind of glass uh, fuse. I when I when I was first fitting them, I couldn't find a polyfuse that I was happy um, from the data sheet about, and I couldn't get any um I, and nobody could give me a kind of you know go buy this one um so i bought some standard kind of glass glass fuses and the holders um that's fitted inside the simplex inside the skip chassis obviously they're quite they're quite big um so i'm hoping that there's enough room for all of this inside the inside the model i think there should be um, in fact, I think the main problem will be that I might want to shorten some of these cables, but I don't want to do that yet um, until I've fully figured out exactly how it's all going to go. I mean, we know from past experience that the battery is going to go kind of battery is going to kind of go here. The local remote module itself is probably going to go about here, 
uh, which means I can probably get the the fuse down this this side here and everything um, in and just shove the wires in. Um, you'll notice I haven't got a, an on-off switch. I hadn't. I was in two minds about it. Again, it's more stuff to fit inside the the model if I don't want to actually find somewhere to put it on the outside. Um, I don't tend to leave my models with batteries in them. I'm either using them or I'm not. Um, so I think I'm just going to do it so that I have to kind of reach inside the model and pull the battery. Um, which is fine because as I say I'll, I'll, I'd want to take the battery out of the model anyway. Um, last thing you want is a LiPo battery going bad inside a, inside a model you've spent no, tons of time on. Um, so yeah, so so that's all all done, all sorted, um, and yeah, I, I think that's uh, that's definitely progress. I have a, a locomotive that moves. As I say, um, it's a shame I kind of messed up a bit of the painting on the buffer beams. My masking was quite good. I managed to mask not too badly, so I've just print, painted the face of the buffer beam. But as I say, um, I'm not that skilled with the airbrush, and I'm not entirely sure what went, what went wrong. I did a, a first coat, which wasn't too bad, and then the second one just splurted everywhere. Um, I don't know whether the uh, whether I'd not cleaned the airbrush properly or, or what, but it was, um, yeah, a bit of a disaster. So um, as I say it's, it actually looks a lot better now. It's dried than it did when I first when I first put it on. Um, but as you can, as I say, as you can see on the back, um, you can just about if I get it in the right light, you can see there's kind of a ripple, um, and this bit looks like it's got thinner paint. So I'm just going to weather this um, to to match. Some of it, of course, will be hidden. Uh, by the buffer blocks, which are the, the coupling blocks, which I have um, given a matte black uh, primer coat to, um, so I can glue these in place. Uh, they'll get kind of weathered um, once they're in place on the on the um, on the loco to to match everything around them. Uh, take the sheen off a little bit. Um, so yeah, so um, I think that's uh, that definitely feels that like progress. I have a loco that remo that moves under its own kind of power, as it were. Uh, from the controller that I want to use, um, everything's sorted. Um, so yeah, I think the next step will be the probably put the buffer beams on, uh, and then glue the the body in place um, and get all this stuff inside. Once I've got the body on and this made sure all this fits, um, then um, I will be able to do the side panels, finish the seat, uh, and the rest of the detailing. Um, but yeah, we're definitely moving, moving nice and quickly now. The end is the end is in sight, as it were. I can I can I can feel that I've got a I've got a locomotive on the on the bench in front of me now, which is nice.